In this video, we will create a simple Hello World application using Qt Quick. Qt Quick is the ideal technology for modern touch, embedded, and desktop applications. At the end of the tutorial, you will have a basic familiarity with Qt Creator. The first step is to launch Qt Creator. On Windows, this can be done through the Start menu. We'll be using version 4.3 of Qt Creator as it comes with lots of improvements to the Qt Quick Designer. Once Qt Creator is open, you'll see the welcome screen. From here, we can create or open projects and run examples and tutorials. Let's create a new project. Click on the New Project button. The New Project dialog will appear, giving us a lot of different project templates. Select Qt Quick Application and then click on the Choose button. Now we're looking at the Qt Quick application wizard, which will guide us through the process of creating a Qt Quick project. The first thing we need to do is give the project a name. This will be used as both the name of the project directory and the project file itself, so it cannot contain spaces. Let's name it Hello Quick World, separated by hyphens. Now we need to choose where the project will be created. The default location is usually good enough, but feel free to change it to a place that works for you. If you want to use that location for future projects, you can check the Use as Default Project Location checkbox. Click Next. The next step asks us which build system we'd like to use. The build system we choose determines the extension of our project file, which is a collection of files and settings that affect how the project is built. As Qt Creator takes care of those details for us, we're going to stick with the default, but feel free to use any build system you're familiar with. This step asks us to specify the minimum Qt version that the project will use. Our choice here affects which of the available kits will be offered to us in a later step but new kits can also be added to a project at any time. The default value is usually fine, so we'll leave it as is. The other option on this page asks us whether or not we'd like a UI.QML file to be added to the project. A UI.QML file allows us to edit a Qt Quick scene in Creator's Qt Quick Designer, something which is very useful when getting started with Qt Quick. Let's leave the checkbox checked and click Next. Now we're looking at the kit selection step. Qt Creator will automatically detect any Qt versions that you chose with the installer. We only have one Qt version installed, so we can click Next. Note that you can go back to an earlier step in the wizard by clicking the back arrow in the top left corner of the dialog. Finally, we're given a summary of how our project will look based on our choices so far. There are also options to add the project as a sub-project of another project, and an option to add the project to version control. Click Finish. Our project has been generated. Now we're looking at main.qml in the editor. Qt Creator has several modes, all of which can be seen on the left-hand side of the window in the mode selector. The easiest way to begin creating applications is to use design mode which allows us to visually drag and drop items into place. Currently, design mode is not available, as we don't have the correct type of file open. In the Projects pane, at the top left corner of the window, expand the Resources item. Keep expanding each child node until you see mainform.ui.qml, and then double-click on it to enter design mode. We are now looking at our application's main form, the application template we chose comes with some existing UI elements that we don't need for this example. We can remove them by going to the Navigator pane on the left side of the screen, selecting each item under the rectangle item, and hitting Backspace or Delete. Let's add a button. In the top left corner of the window, there is a Library pane. This contains QML types that we can drag and drop onto the form resources that we've added to the project, 
and QML imports that are available to us. To use a button in our UI, we need to import the module that provides it. Click the Add Import Combo Box button and select Qt Quick Controls 2 from the list. The exact version listed will vary depending on which version of Qt is installed and the current kit in use. Now that we have the correct import, click on the QML Types tab in the library pane. A Qt Quick Controls 2 section is now available. There are a couple of ways to find the button control. Either collapse surrounding sections and resize the Qt Quick Controls 2 section, or use the filter at the top of the pane. Let's use the filter. Click on the filter field and type button. Drag a button onto the form. On the right hand side of the window, you'll see the property editor. This contains detailed information about the selected object. The tab on the left contains properties specific to the selected item. The middle tab contains layer options that affect how the item is positioned within the scene. The tab on the right contains advanced options, mostly related to the rendering. Let's anchor the button to the center of the form. Go to the Layout tab and check the Anchor Item Vertically and Anchor Item Horizontally buttons. This ensures that the button stays in the center of the form, even when resized. As we are now no longer using the X and Y properties to position our button, we can reset them by clicking the small icon to the left of each value and selecting Reset from the menu. Next, we'll change the text of the button by clicking on the button tab. Double click on the button text and type in push me. Hit enter to confirm the changes. Notice that the button's text on the form has changed. Now let's add a label. Using the library panes filter, type in label and drag and drop it onto the form, above the button. Go to the Layout tab and check the Anchor Item Horizontally button. And then reset the X property. Now the label will be horizontally centered and its Y position will stay fixed. We previously used the property editor to change the button's text, but it's also possible to double click on an item with text to change it. Double click on the label and press backspace to remove the text, and then enter to confirm the changes. If you click on the form outside of the label, you'll see that the label is now invisible. There are a couple of ways to find and select a label. The first way is to click and drag on the form above the button. The second way is to use the navigator by clicking on the label in the item tree. Now we're going to give the button some behavior when it's clicked. To do this, we can switch to edit mode by clicking on the edit mode icon on the left hand side of the screen in the mode selector. In version 4.3 and newer, we can click on the Text Editor Vertical tab on the bottom right corner of the form. We can also show both the designer and editor at the same time by clicking on the icons below the vertical tabs. Let's use the Text Editor. Now we'll take a look at the source code for our main form which is in mainform.ui.qml. UI.qml files are reserved for declarative code, which means that we shouldn't add JavaScript code to them. Instead, we'll expose the button and label as properties of the main form type, making them available to other files that can use JavaScript. 
This allows a clean separation of an interface and its logic. To expose the items as properties of the form, go to the Navigator pane and click on the square icon on the same row as each item. Notice that two new lines of code were added to our form. Now let's use these properties to respond to click events. Open main.qml by clicking on the combo box at the top of the code editor and selecting it. In this file, an instance of main form has been declared. The anchors.fill parent line tells the form that it should always be as large as its parent, which in this case is the window. The line below it was added for us as an example when the project was created. Let's remove it and add our own code. When the button is clicked, we'll set the text of the label. To do this, we respond to the button's clicked signal in what is called a signal handler. All signal handlers start with on, followed by the name of the signal, where the first character is uppercase. Type button to get access to the button, followed by a period. Then type on clicked, followed by a colon. Qt Creator will offer auto-completion suggestions to speed up the process. You can select one of these at any time by hitting enter. Next, add an opening curly brace and then hit enter. Creator added a matching closing brace for us and now we can write some JavaScript code. Type the following code. This sets hello world as the text for the label. The qstr function returns a translated version of the string that we pass in. It's a good idea to use this for strings that will be visible to the end users of your application, as it makes translating into different languages much easier. Let's run our application. Click the run button, the green play icon, in the lower left of the window. A dialog will appear, asking us what should be done about the unsaved files that we've been working on. For the changes that we've made to be visible when running the application, we have to save them. We want this to happen automatically, so check the Always Save Files Before Build checkbox, and then click Save All. Now that the application has started, click on the button. The text of the label changes to Hello World.